Welcome to video 90 in series 3 and in this video we're going to make the gun animations. Okay, first of all I think I'd like to make this assault rifle a prefab, so I'm going to prefabs, I'll make a new folder and I'll call it guns and drop it in there. Okay, and now whatever uh, that previous one was, you saw it was blue, some sort of prefab, that should be broken now automatically. It is now all belonging to this uh, parent here, the assault rifle. Okay, and I should actually attach it to the player, otherwise we can't see what we're doing when we're trying to do the animations. It'll all make sense in just a moment. Uh, so I need to take it and put it on the first person character. Now what should the position be? Uh, just copy those values here, item local position, so put it at 0.49, not that, oops, 0.49, minus 0.27, and what was that last value? A 0.76. Okay, and that is the position that I just, well, I just happen to like for the assault rifle. I'll set the uh, layer to weapon. Well, actually, it'll get set by code anyway. I don't actually have to do that, but I'm just doing it uh, any anyway. Okay, uh, right. So now that we've done that, uh, so we need to actually make animations, right? So we've got this animator here. It's got no controller, and we need to make some animations. Uh, so what I will do is I'll just make a folder here to begin with, and I'll just put it here. Uh, gun. And I'll just leave it at that. And now I'll open up the uh, animations window. So right here. And dock it. Okay, like that. Now select the assault rifle. So you select it. Now we can begin animating it. So first of all, we need to create an animation clip. So just click create. Okay, so I'm just going to call this gun idle. Like that and save it inside the gun folder. Okay, so now what it wants us to do is to add a property that we want to animate. Oh, uh, well, I'll just do it, I'll just do it manually. Like, you could actually go in here and uh, do fancy things. Like, see, it automatically recognize what we're changing and it's making an animation for us uh, based off whatever I was doing there. Uh, it's recording right now, but I didn't want to do that, so I'll just undo all that. Uh, and let me just make sure its position is set back to normal. Oh, whoops, I think I deleted that, so I'll just create again, and uh, just overwrite that. There we go. And okay, so now let me just do it manually. Uh, what I'll do is I only want to change the rotation, so I'll just change the rotation here. And in fact, I'm not actually going to do anything. I'm just going to delete the last keyframe uh, over here, far away. I don't want the animation to be one second long. Uh, it's no reason for that. I just want it to be a tiny, just set it, move it away from zero, zero, zero. Otherwise it can be problematic and just push it around to zero. Uh, well, I don't even know what that is. Five milli milliseconds probably. Uh, so just move it to over there and leave it at zero, zero, zero. This is the idle animation. And this is what will cause, when I've got it set up, uh, this is what will cause the gun to point in the uh, correct direction uh, when we pick it up. So we don't have to do anything else. And of course, idle animation is idle animation. Okay, enough talking about that. So next I'll make a new clip. So just click there and call it gun draw. So when you pull out the weapon, this is the animation that plays. Again, the rotation. Now you can just bring this one here. You can insert keyframes, of course. Uh, so I'll just move this here to about 10, uh, I think that is, milliseconds. Uh, and then I will change the uh, X rotation to minus, oops, minus 90. There we go. And, or rather, now I'll start with minus 90 and come to zero. Yeah, that's logical. So come back here, set this back to zero. Uh, so when uh, the player pulls out the gun, this is basically what happens. So yeah, it starts up in the vertical position, and it comes that way. Okay, so I'll save what uh, we've done so far. Let me just check the idle. Yep, that's zero. Check gun draw. Starts at minus 90, goes to zero. Good. Let's make a new one. This one will be called gun shoot. Okay, 
and again add uh, the rotation property and this one uh, I'll just take this keyframe move it to point to the uh, 5 and just delete this one here coming back I'll set X to like minus 4 and uh, Y to something like 1 so just a very slight uh, motion there that we'll see when we transition from idle to shooting and back there'll just be a slight movement in the gun okay next is the gun reload so make another one this is the bigger animation gun reload Now the total reload time for these guns will be around 3 seconds, a bit past 3 seconds. So this animation itself will be over 2 seconds, and then, then there will be a further second. So a reason for that is because of the sound that plays, so you need a bit of time for the animation. The animation should be long enough for, so that the sound can logically match, and also because it, for it to just make sense. Alright, so uh, just add in the rotation property. Uh, we will need to make a couple of keyframes. Let me just drag this one to like 15 uh, milliseconds. Just increase the uh, time there, uh, the amount I can see. So I'm just using my mouse wheel, of course. Now it will start at uh, zero, 0, this animation. And coming here to the next point, it'll go to minus 80 and 30. So the gun gets lifted up very quickly. Okay. Now a bit past the two second mark, so, so maybe somewhere around here like that. Add another keyframe, and for that again minus 80 and 30, and then a bit further down at like 230, I think about there, I add another keyframe, and set it back to zero, zero. Now it isn't going to look quite right, you see that, look at that, how the gun is going back, really weird. Even though that we have set it to uh, both of them, these keyframes are minus 80 and 30, both of them. So what on earth is going on here? What we need to do is to select this keyframe, right click on it, and say right tangent constant. So maintain those values. Don't, don't deviate. Okay. So that's all it is. So now it maintains that. And this is the time when the reload sound is going to happen. And on that note, uh, let's actually add event markers. So I will place the uh, first event marker at about the 5 millisecond mark. And here you go, it's this one, add event. Now, in order to add an event, you must have already written a script that is attached to the game object that has this animator, and so this animation, and then you will be able to select that uh, method uh, for playing. But uh, we haven't written that script yet, so we will come to that later when we uh, get to, uh, I think, the guns, well, something anyway, probably the uh, gun ammo script or the uh, gun sound script, one of those. Anyway, so let's close that. So that's not the only animation, uh, not the only event. Add another one about here, somewhere about here. So it should be at least 10 milliseconds away uh, from the end because my uh, transition duration when you set up the controller the transition duration will have about 0.1 seconds so it needs a little bit of time so anyway what I should say is if you put an event too far down on an animation there's a good chance it won't get called because the animation will start to transition at some earlier point to another animation and then the event that was placed too close to the end is not called uh, and then you can move them anytime. So if you find that's happening uh, later on, then you can easily change that. So let me think, where is a logical place? The only way to know is through trial and error. So just slap on an event. And when we get to that, uh, we will set that up uh, as required. Okay, so those should be our four animations. Let me just double check that they are all looking okay. Always important to do that and make sure that's okay. Gun draw is fine. Gun shoot looks okay as well. Gun reload. Now there is another thing. There is a possibility that when we try this out, this may misbehave. Sometimes you need to just have another keyframe. I'm just telling you just in case you have a problem and it appears for you that the animation doesn't work out quite well. Uh, sometimes you need to have a keyframe at 000 
and then just on the other one not far away, and that space, that animation then, it just seems to behave a little better. Uh, that's just an observation I've had. Uh, maybe it's not like that anymore, but anyway. So if you do a, have a problem, and I see that problem, then I'll definitely uh, change that so that it's not an issue. Okay, and this is working. Uh, well, that will be working just fine. Okay, uh, let me think about it. So now that I've done that, let me save this. I just have to think something logical here. So when it is on the player, actually enable the animator. Yes, because the animator, when it is on the player, uh, it should be enabled. When you throw it, it shouldn't be enabled. So another thing to remember, uh, when the animations are actually operating, uh, when you throw the weapon, the reason why I disable the animator is so that the gun can then be taken over by the physics of the rigid body. Otherwise, the gun continues to stay and animate, and it'll just stand up vertically wherever you throw it about. So it looks really strange. Uh, so I guess in the next video, we'll come to the animator and then set this up correctly. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll just save that. Okay, and there the red is gone. And all right, I'll see you in the next video.